be very honest, this is an easy problem to solve. But I believe that this problem is asked in interviews because your interviewer wants to see how much of a concise solution that you can come up with. Because it is very simple to come up with a brute force solution and a solution where you are iterating over every character. So how do you go about solving it? Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Going forward, we will start with a brute force solution and then make our way to an efficient solution so that you are visualizing how we can come up with a very short solution. After that, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can actually see how it's working. That way you will never forget it. Without further ado, let's get started. Let us make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given a sample string and an array of indices. So what does this array of indices actually tell you? Let us look at a sample test case. In our sample test case, you can see that I have this string and this array of indices. So this array of indices is telling me that in my final string, R will be at the fourth position. Once again, in my final string, this character E, this will come at the third index. For this particular test case, this string will be your answer. You can verify it, right? Check it out. O should come at the fifth index, right? And if you find it out, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So O is in fact coming at the fifth index. So technically, this string has been shuffled as per all of these indices. And you have to find out the original string or the restored string. For your first test case, this is your restored string. Similarly, you have your second test case. You have a string ABC and these are its indices. Your final answer will be the same string ABC because your indices are given in the exact same order. So where will A go in the final string? That will be at the zeroth index. Where will C go at the final string? That will be at the second index. So just confirm it once again. Let us look back at our first test case. Where does K go? K will go at the seventh index and you can check it out. K is at the seventh index in fact, right? So if this problem statement is now even clearer, feel free to stop the video and try the problem once again. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. When you start thinking of a solution, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? You will try to think that, okay, you need some sort of a mapping that can tell me that the fourth character is R, right? You need a mapping that can tell that the third index will be E, right? So this tells me that I need some sort of a map. So if I have a map, how can I populate it? I can say that the fourth index should be a R. Moving ahead, I can say that the fifth index should be O. The sixth index will be C. And then similarly, you are going to populate your entire map. Once you have this map ready, what will you do? You need to form your string from the zeroth index, right? And then you can go character by character. So first of all, you look at the zeroth index and then get the character over here. You get an L, right? Next, you will try to search for the first index and then get the character over here. So you get an I. Similarly, you will keep on moving ahead and you will get your complete string. And this method works, right? It will give you a correct answer every time. But the only limitation of this method is that you are utilizing an extra structure and certainly you are doing a lot more checks just to determine that, hey, where will my character actually go? And as I said before, this problem is all about how much of a concise solution that you can come up with. When you solve this problem yourself, you realize, right, that this is such a basic question. I just need to find a very efficient way that I can populate this string immediately. So how do you go about doing that? Let us have a look. Once again, let us take up our sample test case, correct? And try to think what are the stuff that you know? You know that the length of this current string is nine, right? So this tells you that the length of a restored string or the original string, it will be once again nine, right? It cannot be larger or it cannot be smaller. So what I can do is I can create a new character array that has nine spaces. So a zero based indexing will mean that you start from the index zero and go all the way up till index eight, correct? And this array, this will hold your final string. Now just follow the problem 
and we will do exactly what the problem said. It is telling me that for the string s, I have a character r and where does it go? It goes at the index 4, correct? So just take up this r and add it to your fourth index, right? Similarly, move ahead now. What is the second character? The second character is o and your indices array tells you that this second character will go at your fifth index. So just take up this O and add it to your fifth index over here. Similarly, you will keep moving ahead. Where does the next character C go? C goes at the sixth index. So I am going to write down C at my sixth index over here. For the next character, that is K. Where does K go? K goes at the seventh index. So you add it at the seventh index over here. Similarly, you will keep on moving ahead for your each character and then populate them at all of these specific indexes. Once you do that, your character array will start to look something like this. So now you see this character array ultimately has your final string. Just convert this to a string and return it as your answer. This is much more efficient, right? You do not need a complex structure like a map. And now let us quickly do a dry run of the code and see how much of a short solution that you can come up with. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. Yes, it is that concise. And on the right, once again, I have my sample test case that is passed in as an input parameter to the function restore string. Oh, and by the way, this complete code and its test cases are also available in my GitHub profile. You can find the link in the description below. Moving on with a dry run. What was the first thing that we do? First of all, we need to create a character array, right? And this character array will be of the same length. So I have my character array that starts at index zero and ends at index eight, right? And this will ultimately store your answer. And how do we go about solving it? Now check out this second loop. And this is where all the magic happens. What was our question saying? Our question said that in an indices array, the first value, this is determining where will my first character go, correct? And that is exactly what we do. Check it out. The current value of i is 0. So what do I do? I do str at right. How does this revolve? This revolves to str. Now indice is 0. Indice 0 is 4, right? So I am doing str at 4. So this is now revolving to this particular block, correct? And what do you equate it to? You equate it to s dot char at zero. And what is s dot char at zero? That is the letter R. So I will do R over here. And as soon as I do it, R will come over here. Moving ahead, what will happen? The value of I will now change to one. And this time you will refer to this particular number. This refers to this block over here. And what do you populate? You populate the second character that is O. So when this loop runs ahead, you will enter O. And similarly, this array will be populated completely. Once this loop is completed, you simply return this array as your answer. So technically, this was just a one line solution, right? The time complexity of this solution is order of n because you need to iterate through the entire string only once. And the space complexity of this solution is also order of n because you need some extra space to determine the position of each character. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that whenever you encounter these kind of problems in an interview, try to come up with a solution and present it to your interviewer. There are chances that your interviewer will say that, okay, how can you improve it? Then try to think of concise ways because you will be able to visualize that, okay, there are ways where I can make this solution shorter and ask your interviewer that, okay, what is the time complexity you're expecting? What is the space complexity you're expecting? That way you will get a hint. For example, in this problem, you need not use a hash fed, right? You can just use arrays and they are a less complex data structure, correct? So less complex solutions are always desirable. Just keep that in mind. So while going through this video, did you face any problems or have you seen any other such problems which can be solved just using a single line? There are certain questions, trust me. So tell me all of it in the comment section below and it will be helpful for anyone else also who is watching this video. I'll be happy to help you out. 
As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos and I will bring more problems for you. Until then, see ya!